An e-bike conversion kit is a great, fun and eco-friendly idea for all those who need a quick, fun and cheap way of transportation. For all those who want to stop commuting with their cars. Doing it yourself is not very difficult and there is a pretty good chance that you already have a base for the conversion in your garage. Dust it. The fifth level and let's hear it. This is how it sounds like up the hill. And this is how it sounds like going high speed. My friends, today's episode we are starting from the end, kind of, because first I just want to tell you what problems you might come upon when converting bike to an e-bike, what type of bike would be the best for the job and perhaps you maybe even have such a bike in your garage for years. So let's hit it. The most simple piece of advice I have for you is get yourself a vintage cheap and very classical bicycle. 26 inch wheels are great. Of course you can build 29ers, 27.5, whatever you want. 26 is great because it will be still pretty light. It will be very cheap to get on eBay, let's say. And what's important, the larger the size of your frame, the most space you're gonna have for the battery and the control. As you can see, I have lots of space here. This is a kind of um, in between medium and large. Small frames could have some problems, I think. This bike, if it was in the small size, it would st it will still fit the battery and the controller uh, where they are. So this is important. Another thing, of course, if you have the original bike on 26 inch wheels, you wanna buy 26 inch wheel with a motor. This is the rear motor conversion kit. That means we are replacing the rear wheel uh, with the wheel from the, from the kit. It's got the motor in the hub. You also want to know the spacing between the dropouts. So from here to there, because you want to know the length of the axle. But these old bikes didn't have many standards for axles and, and dimensions. So it will be pretty easy for you to find the right wheel for such a bicycle. If the axle from the conversion kit was a little bit too long, you can always stretch your frame a little bit. That's no problem. Also about the chainstays, you want to have the right length of the chainstays uh, so that you have enough space for the wheel. As you can see, there's plenty of space here. You want to know how many gears you have and whether you have the cassette or the free hub or the free wheel. This one is the Free wheel version and finally you want to know the type of the brakes I needed a rim for the rim brakes because I don't run disc brakes on this bike but you can easily buy something with the disc brakes I'm not sure even maybe even this one would go with a disc rotor right here so once again simple frame not too small of a size 26 inch wheels will be great the bike will be quite light and now we can convert it this is really simple. I haven't mentioned the wheel size. Of course, if you have 26 inch wheels on your base model, you want to have 26 inch wheel on your conversion kit. That's what we did. Now let's look at these. Here's our display and these buttons. By using these buttons, we will be communicating with this controller. This controller then will tell the motor what kind of work do we require of it. There's also a rim tape in this um, conversion kit. We've got also the brake sensor. That means when we start braking, the motor will stop working, which is good. Some conversion kits will come with a lamp, which is not standard on many. This is actually the first one I got with the lamp. And it's really clever to have the lamp, which will be connected to our e-bike battery. And finally, the throttle. Just remember that in many countries, especially European countries, when you put the throttle on your bike, 
it stops being a bike and it becomes a, an electrical scooter. So just be aware of that. And then the batteries. Most of the batteries will have shape like, like this one. But this one seemed really beautiful to me. So today we are putting this one on our wheeler. And then two things. Of course, you'll be interested in the capacity of the battery. This one is 12 amp hours or 432 watt hours. Um, as an example, those basic Shimano steps uh, batteries will have 506, I guess, uh, watt hours, so a little bit more. This is also very important. If your motor is 36 volts, you want to have 36 volts battery. That's it, let's get to work. One thing we know for sure, we don't need the rear wheel of our basis model. We can think about using its original tire. This tire doesn't look very well, so I'm gonna use something else. Not here, not this one, not this one. This one. And so I'm only going to remove the free wheel from this wheel. I'm removing the front wheel also, just so that I have more space around the bike. First, the rim tape. The rim tape has to be centered and it's got to cover all these nipple holes. Otherwise, we cut the inner tube. Oh, I'm gonna also borrow the inner tube from the old wheel. One pointless thing about this kit is that we need to assemble the freewheel onto the hub, but this nut is on the way. Uh, I cannot thread the nut through the, this little hole on the freewheel and I cannot simply remove the nut because then this connector is on its way, on the way of the nut. So I have to disconnect these wires, remove the nut and then assemble the freewheel. So they shouldn't be doing it in the factory actually. They should leave the cables as they, as they were. By the way, I wrote to the factory saying that they shouldn't be pre-assembling these two and they said, okay, good point. The good news is that I could easily disassemble these, disconnect these by using a needle and it will be easy also to put it back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The free wheel is being tightened when we put the chain on and pedal. And we go back. I just needed to bend these clicks, these connectors back. Looking good. Guys, I forgot to thread this one. Okay, back on track. Check whether the wheel is centered and it sits nicely in the dropouts. And now we can fasten those nuts little by little on both sides. Just in case you forgot about this cup. Okay, this is weird. The display. You want to assemble the display to this adapter first because then these two screws will be behind the handlebars. This is going to be our remote. Now the battery. This is the charger. Here is how we're gonna mount it.
little bit of Loctite, a thread lock actually. If this bubble cage mount was higher, that would be more convenient for me because I would go up with the battery and have more space here for the controller, which means that in this position I need to get my controller mounted higher. As you can see, it's pretty tight. Don't over tight these because you can damage the thread on the frame side. Let's put the battery on. Yeah, it looks pretty much like a huge water bottle. Okay, where does the controller go? It would be nice if I could lower it and higher the battery. It's not possible here unless I use, for example, the zip ties only. And this is going to be like that. Yeah. Now let's have some music and let's do it. Changing the plan. I have these cables routed on the top tube and so I don't want to have additional wires on the main tube, down tube. So I'm going to put those all together and we will assemble this box upside down. Then I'll have here nice place to somehow secure all these cables. Let's do the pedal assist sensor. We remove the left ground arm. That's a little stiff. I'm gonna show you a little hack. This is a seat post. And now I have much more leverage. Hack number two, the wheels get back on the bike and the bike gets back on the floor so that I have a force and resistance. Hack number three. Whew, Decreasing. I don't have nice flat surface here, but we'll try. Okay. Okay, let's make first connections. The motor. Here we have the wire from the motor right there and here we have our pass sensor got it and the battery this is where we mount the battery and this is the cable that connects the battery with the controller and this is the thing i had to change because the original plugs were not compatible with the controller now it will work And so we've got two, four, five plugs which are not connected yet. This one here is for the throttle. Then we've got the light. This is the front light and it fits right here. So I guess the other one is for the optional rear light. I'm sorry, there is one more for our display. And this is the braking sensor and I suppose one is for front, one is for rear, we are only using the rear one here. Now I'm installing the battery and if everything is connected properly, the bike should work.
<laughs> and the display is upside down. In order to quickly check whether the motor is connected properly, I'm using the throttle. It's connected and now... This works. The pass sensor... It works. It's working. You see, we can be riding without the chain because there is no power sensor. But this braking sensor is not being installed properly. This sensor should be closer to the magnet because it's only when I disconnect this cable, the controller allows me to use the motor. When it's connected, I cannot use the motor because the system thinks, so to speak, so to speak as I was braking all the time. This is too far from the sensor. It didn't work like this. I thought I would stick it just like that on the edge. Doesn't work either. It has to be like that. Then it works. Great, let's organize the cables as neatly as possible. Let's cut the zip ties and the bike will be ready for testing in the second video. Great. Here's the sound. Thanks to many magnets right here, there is not, not a huge delay in when the motor starts. But just remember that when you start from, let's say, this position, it won't start until the next magnet will hit the sensor. And that's when the throttle would be, would, would come handy. I like these batteries, they look nice. They have additional switch here. And this one, this is no switch. It just displays the level of the energy you still have. It shows three out of five. Three are green, two are red. Uh, and the display will, will confirm that. This is pretty serious uphill and it goes 22, 23 kilometers per hour. It's like 16, 17 miles per hour. And the motor isn't really loud, which I like. It goes beautifully up the hill. Yeah, I'm happy with the sound and with the power and I will let you know in the community tab what is its max range on the max assistance level. Thanks for watching and see ya.